I think that the people that visited us and the people that uh, choose Portugal to live don't have to be afraid that they will live in a bubble of uh, the expats. No, uh, they, uh, they, they can be easily integrated in our society, in our culture, in all levels. Uh, and we are not speaking just in the high levels of people or media. No, in all the levels of people, they, uh, it will be really easy for them to feel integrated in the community. My name is Ricardo Costa. I'm currently the chairman of Bernardo da Costa Group and also president of the General Council of the Business Association of Minho and honorary consul of uh, Kosovo country. It's a pleasure to be in this uh, Portugal, the simple life. And we are speaking how Portugal can be an splendid country for foreigner people, not just to visit our country, but also to choose Portugal as a country to live. We are uh, really anxious to, to receive you in our amazing country. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal, The Simple Life. And it's a real honor to be joined here by Ricardo Costa. Ricardo, bon dia. Thank bon you for dia. being on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, it's wonderful to have you. Um, we've been connected for some time on LinkedIn, although you have like... 150,000 followers on LinkedIn or something. 70,000, so something like that. 70,000. 170,000, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's a good number. It's a good number. I mean, we're, we're going to get on to what daily life is like in Portugal because like we were talking before we started recording, it's it's the part that sometimes you can't put in a in a brochure or in yeah. a tourism manual is, is, is how you feel when you're here and how you feel when you interact with Portuguese people, these are, this is something quite beautiful here, but for me, and I don't want to get too political. It's not a political podcast, but for me, for I, sure. I find that we've got this advancement happening in Portugal on a, on a huge scale with the, the amount of people, the amount of skill that we have in this country, the amount of things that people are doing, which are amazing. I mean, even some of the people that we've had on the podcast doing groundbreaking cancer treatments, dentists, a lot of social enterprise. I had uh, Miguel Neva, I think you know him, yes. who's doing color ad. I mean, the work is just incredible. And then you see it at a kind of a government level. These people aren't being rewarded with what they deserve. Uh, if you look at the level of, we you spoke about the level of literacy in this country, how better it's got, the level of education, the medical professionals that we have, and we're still behind in terms of what people are making uh, because it's normal that cost of housing is going to go up. It goes up everywhere in the world. It's normal that cost of food and cost of living will go up, but our salaries in Portugal aren't reflecting that. And this is where I think we see on a governmental level, we're a little bit behind. Yes, totally. And totally, totally agree. And I think it's the biggest challenge uh, because when we speak about increase the salaries, uh, usually uh, we also speak about productivity um, in terms of the, the companies. Um, but what we have to increase first, the productivity or the salaries, it's a discussion that uh, uh, the governments are doing uh, several years ago uh, in the last decades, let's say. Uh, it's true that the minimum salary increased uh, more than in the past in the last four years and this is good but the bad part is that the minimum salary is became close to the average salary and this is not good uh, because the average salary also needs to uh, to increase um, and we when we speak about productivity um, the same people in portugal doing the same job uh, in Portugal, most of the times uh, people say that are not productive, uh, but if these same people move to Germany or to Sweden or to Norway uh, doing the same function, they are considered productive. This is because of the salary for sure, uh, yeah. because, because the people, uh, the, the person is, is the same, is, we are speaking about the same person. But it's a challenge, it's a challenge yeah. Uh, yeah. to keep this safe which is one of uh, our most attractive uh, factors that we have in Portugal. Is uh, uh, We are in this uh, border of uh, Europe, uh, a really calm country with uh, almost no problems. Uh, we are almost uh, neutral positions and give us this, um, this safe that everybody needs because it's one of the basic conditions of the human being is, uh, yeah. is the safe. It's yeah, you can't put a price tag on on safety, and it's no, it's something no. that uh, I'm from South Africa, Ricardo. So okay. for me, the so safety, you understand, you understand uh, the safety I mean. for me was was 
one of the biggest, the top five reasons for me to to move here back in 2009. Yeah, I think we've we've got the people here to to make this to do some really special things in Portugal. It's just about the conditions that people can flourish. I think that's uh, the most important thing. But tell us a little bit about the work that you do. I know it's a a lot of things that you're involved in, uh, and your group, and 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 all of that. Uh, tell us a bit about about you and and what you're what you're doing. Currently, I'm um, and since uh, one month ago, uh, I'm chairman of the Bernardo da Costa Group. is a group that uh, my grandfather started in 1957. Um, when he started and uh, till 2004, it was only one company. I, I started in the group in 2002. And then I, um, as an entrepreneur, I start to create uh, new business, new areas to expand the business to other countries. We are pre present now in uh, Spain, Brazil, uh, Morocco and Cameroon. We are opening now in Italy. And uh, in terms of business, we have different kinds of uh, areas, uh, electronic security um, solutions. So we are distributors, training and consulting, audio and professional video. We have this uh, Happiness Academy is our one of our new projects. Uh, and we are owners of so some marketplace, some um, uh, companies in uh, financial literacy. Um, with uh, We have around 320 people working with us. And, um, and I told you already the countries that, uh, that we had. This is the professional part and um, the way that I heard my life. I'm also honorary consul of Kosovo. Um, the youngest country in Europe. Um, uh, because... How did that happen? How did that? I was going to ask you. How did that happen? Um, I received here in Braga three years ago the ambassador of Kosovo in Portugal, Ilber. Uh, we create a good, really good uh, connection. Uh, we have some uh, some uh, lunches together. He saw my activity on these diplomatic and cooperation um, issues, and he invited me uh, to be honorary consul. And uh, the minister, the minister of foreign affairs, came here last year in 2023 mm -hmm. in May, and they they formally invited me to be, and I accepted with a lot of honor. Uh, wow. I visited Kosovo mm -hmm. two years ago, and it was a really really good surprise. A small country. But uh, that uh, can be the entry door uh, of an uh, uh, important region, the Balkans region, with the seven countries uh, around Kosovo that uh, are growing, that increasing the economy, that really soon they will be part of uh, the European Union. Looking for a home in Portugal? This break in Portugal, the Simple Life podcast is brought to you by Dylan and his team of certified realtors at Portugal Realty. Portugal Realty offers the exclusive Simple Life Home Buyer Program. Visit PortugalRealty.com today and book your free call to find out more. Welcome to the Simple Life. We need more than an hour. That's the reality <laughs> to talk about everything because there's so much here. But um, quick question, the guy from the ambassador from Kosovo, what did you what did you feed him that first time that he that he visited you? What did you guys have for lunch? You said you had some lunches. Can you remember yes, what you um, ate? Uh, uh, the first lunch we eat uh, in a very, very good restaurant here in Braga that is called Don Elvira. Um, and they have uh, a good, uh, let, how I can say, tamboril in, in English. Uh, so it's a tamboril rice, uh, which is amazing. One of the, uh, for me, the best uh, in Portugal. Uh, there, th This rice is recognized in several countries because... Every people that came to Braga that are for other countries, I take them to this restaurant and they love this, uh, this rice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. uh, he presented me this uh, opportunity. Uh, and we, it's a fantastic guy. Now he's a friend. Now he's a friend. Uh, we presented our families and so on. So, um, and it started like this. So the, the tumble real rice was the, the starting point of a good, a good friendship. As always in Portugal, a good business always started at the table uh, with a good yeah. meal uh, and yeah, a good exactly. wine. And a good wine because we also have wonderful wines in uh, in Portugal. Uh, yes. And as the as the food, 
we have very good wines in all the regions of Portugal. If yeah. you go to the north, you, you have a wonderful Varinho and um, a green wine. Uh, then you have the Douro, you have the Down, you have the Alentejo, even the, mm -hmm. that peninsula around Lisbon and, and Setúbal, they have wonderful wines, uh, the Bairrada wines, we have wonderful wines. Um, but what did you see growing up that kind of motivated you to the, to do this level of, of cooperation and co-working and, and working with other areas and people and and all of that because it's it's a wonderful thing. I always said that uh, I always say that uh, in terms of uh, language, for instance, uh, or um, um, to, to speak with foreigner language, we always try to adapt ourselves to speak True. a little bit of other of the language of the other people. Mm -hmm. um, we are not like the Spanish or the Italians that uh, translate everything for their own language. No, we we, we make an effort um, to be nice and to speak the language of the people that we are uh, speaking uh, with. Uh, and this is um, an adaptive um, important issue that we still keep um, nowadays. Um, and I think that make uh, us friendly um, and um, we really like also to share. Uh, we don't have problems to share. Um, and I think this is important in terms of personal relations, but also in terms of um, uh, economic uh, behavior and, uh, and business, uh, business part of, uh, of our life. Yeah, and the probability uh, to go to a, a common restaurant, a normal restaurant, and to have a good food for a good price is really, really high. In all the country, in all yeah. the country. And this is uh, really, really important for people like us that visit a lot of countries. This don't happen in several countries. Don't you miss the food? Don't you miss the food when you go? I know you've been for to a lot sure. of places and you've after gone to places three, where four the days, I, After three, four days, I miss a lot our our food. Because if I go to, if I go, I go, I go to the UK, to Belgium uh, a lot and, and the Netherlands. And man, after two or three days, I'm, I'm dying. I'm you dying it. for you some nice, it, yeah. fresh, Me too. Me even too. the bread, just the bread, you know, just a, a normal Portuguese bread from the padaria. Uh, a, num a normal steak, a normal bacalhau, a normal, we miss it a lot. We miss yeah. it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I lived. Uh, I was resident in Switzerland uh, for two years because I had a business there in Geneva. I visit several countries. And to be honest, I think Portugal is one of the best countries for foreigner people to feel integrated in the society, to feel integrated in the community. Uh, because uh, we, as uh, uh, people, uh, uh, we, we like to, to receive, we like to integrate people in our, in our culture, in our parties, in, in everything. So I, I think that uh, people that visited us and the people that uh, choose Portugal to live don't have to be afraid uh, that they will live in a bubble of uh, the expat. No, uh, they, um, they, they can be easily integrated in our society, in our culture, in all levels. Uh, and we are not speaking just in the high levels of people mm. or media. No, in all the levels of people, uh, they, uh, it will be really easy for them to feel integrated in the community. But I know you like to walk and you like to be outdoors and you, and the things that you're promoting and trying to encourage in your companies, that happiness, that balance. How does Ricardo Costa, how, how does this place, Portugal, give you that happiness and that balance in, in daily life? How do you find it? I'm a person of faith. I really um, believe in the power of the, the faith. Um, when I do this kind of um, walks, um, it is, it, because it's far from Braga to Fatima, it's 270 <laughs> kilometers. So it's yeah, uh, it's nine weird. nine days walking, uh, nine days walking uh, in an average of 30 kilometers per day. But it's important for me for several region, uh, reasons: um, the faith, the sp part, the spiritual part. Uh, nowadays, with this uh, daily stress. Uh, we forget a lot of times to to stop, to think. And uh, these days are important for me to make some reflections, to define the priorities in terms of uh, it will be my life. Uh, so it's important and makes me happy also. Um, Ricardo, um, what is one thing that you would like people to remember 
and to take away from our conversation? I have two, two key words in my life uh, at the moment. One is cooperation and the second word is impact. Uh, the impact that we can create uh, in ourselves because we, all, we only can be good to others if we are uh, in a good way in, um, with health, uh, with the mental health, with physical health and so on. The impact that we can create um, uh, in the community is very, very important for me. So the, the impact that we can create in the society to help these, um, um, these people that uh, uh, for several reasons they cannot have a, a good life and uh, also the part of the culture the, um, uh, which is really important in the life, the art, uh, the music. If, if we can create impact for us to have this uh, as uh, the president of the European Union, I also say the new Bauhaus, the new European Bauhaus, when we can see the beauty, the fair, uh, the right things of the of the life. Um, I think if you can create this impact, is uh, it's important. Um, what everybody want to be happy. Uh, everybody's uh, happy for different ways. Uh, so if we can help people the people that are together with us in our family, the people that work with us in our companies, and the people that are living in the community where we are present, this impact is really important for uh, for me. Um, Ricardo, a question that we ask all of our guests, Portugal, the simple life, why? Because we are really, really an amazing, an amazing country. And we are, as I told in the beginning, being a, a small country, we have everything that people need to have a wonderful life. I like that. Thank you so much for being on the podcast, Ricardo. I've loved, I've really loved this conversation. Thank you. That's a, that's a wrap. So thank you once again to our guest, and thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up, and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine, so download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Cesar's bem-vindo. Welcome to The Simple Life.